When Hunter was introduced, it did not take fans a long time to immediately imagine him in relationships with a lot of different characters approximately his age. There were no ships that were predominantly popular. There were simply a bunch of them that were moderately popular. A few people put him with Luce, but they were largely criticized by the rest of the fans because of the popularity of Lumity. More popular relationships people imagined Hunter being in were Hunter and Emra, or even Hunter and Eldrick. And there were a few Hunter and Willow people there, but not a lot. This quickly changed after the episode Any Sport in a Storm, when Hunter first had a few interactions with Willow, and it was suggested that he had feelings for her. The entire tenor of the shipping conversations about Hunter instantly changed, and the waterfall of Huntlow, or Hunter and Willow art, that proliferated was second only to the amount of Lumity art I saw. It was quite an incredible shift that very much emphasizes that if you give the fans material when they're already raring to write Hunter into a relationship with someone or draw artwork of him in a relationship with someone, they will take that bait and run with it as fast as they can. Now, just a little note before we get too far into this, I've also heard this spawn called Winter, because Willow and Hunter, which is a pretty clever name. And it's much more phonetically pleasing than Huntlow, but it's significantly less SEO friendly because it's just the word winter. So I imagine Huntlow is going to be the dominant name for this spawn. It's certainly the more searchable one, so it's the one I'm going to be using. More importantly, I'm going to say that I actually really like this relationship. Who is Hunter? He is a haggard, uncertain teenage dork who doesn't really understand what he should do or who he should be. He's in a mist. He before had a sense of identity grounded in his loyalty to Balos and the idea that Balos depended on him, that Balos needed him, and that he should try to be worthy of that trust and the responsibility that Balos was giving unto him. He believed that Balos, while having a few retrograde opinions that differed markedly from Hunter's, was basically a caring father figure who wanted what's best for Hunter. The experiences Hunter has had in the latter part of Season 2 have completely uprooted him and deracinated him from that conception of himself. He's cast adrift. He is in an existential crisis. He doesn't know who he is anymore. He doesn't know how to really ground his sense of self, his ideals, values, perspectives. He doesn't really have any foundation. He's left drifting. He needs someone he can really depend on, someone who's trustworthy and reliable. Willow, meanwhile, is gradually gaining confidence and wanting someone to trust in her, to think that she is capable and reliable, that she can be depended upon, because that is a perception radically different from the perception that others had of her near the start of the show. At the start of the show, when she was still being bullied by Amity, back when Amity was still a jerk, Willow was very shy, very timid. She could not really develop a sense of identity because she was constantly subordinated to the whims of Amity and her jerk friends. But that slowly changes as Amity reconsiders her actions, which come from a place of defensiveness and anxiety, a place of trying to fulfill the role her parents want her to fulfill, to live up to the image of what a perfect blight should be, and not from her organically derived values and beliefs and impulses. So as Amity changes and becomes closer to Luce and gradually becomes more thoughtful and compassionate, Willow is given space to 
fully develop. She's in the plant coven, so let's use a plant metaphor. She's like a little plant whose roots didn't really have any space to grow because she was in a tiny little flower pot, but now that she's in a vast field, her, the roots have time to grow and spread out and diffuse throughout the soil and draw nutrients from it that allow her, the plant, to grow taller and stronger and more assured. Willa takes advantage of the opportunity she has. She becomes more athletic, she starts working out, and it results in her becoming physically stronger, which for her is very much linked with her emotional and psychological strength. She becomes the captain of the Flyer Derby team, and she is the one to welcome Hunter into the team. She's the one to defend the worth of the other people on the team who are underestimated. She's the one who was so disappointed in Hunter after he betrayed them. And she was the one who still believed in him and still stood up for him. And he really appreciates that. He calls her the captain, not just because she was literally the captain of the team, but as a gesture of respect and reverence. He takes her seriously in a way that no one else really does, because even if they think that she has grown, they still remember who she used to be, this wilting little bit cowardly wimp. They don't see her as this noble, bold, inventive leader and problem solver. Hunter does. For Hunter, this relationship gives him a sense of security and certainty. It gives him someone he can really trust in and know that she'll be there for him. For Willow, it gives her a sense of confidence, a sense of satisfaction that she is not the only one who thinks of herself as this more confident and self-assured person. Not arrogant, but certainly capable, someone who can be confided in. Hunter thinks of her that way as well. He sees her as she really wants to be seen and thinks she should be seen. And that allows them to really bond and grow closer together. It's a really nicely developed relationship, considering especially how little time the show has had to develop it. Before any sport in a storm, people would have thought of this relationship as a completely out of nowhere thing, just like the relationships people were inventing between Hunter and the Blight Twins. But within a few episodes of Hunter and Willow being together, they have made this relationship not only believable, but something that makes sense, something that has its own language, its own distinct little world. You see the varied and nuanced interactions between the two of them that are better for the flourishing and the mutual benefit of them. So it's really nice to see this bond be received so well by the fandom because it's very well developed. Now I've talked before about what I've called Fagin's Law. The idea that as two characters spend more time together, the likelihood of fans shipping them increases slowly but steadily to one. But there is also the case of fans just making relationships between characters who've never met or who've never actually said anything meaningful to each other. This is fine, for the record. There's nothing wrong with a bunch of weird and silly ships that come in and out here and there. It is true that a lot of fans don't really think about, oh, why should these characters be together? What would they say to each other? What would their bond, full and robust and comprehensively realized, be like? Instead, they just see two characters, think they look good together, and then put them together. Or because they have some vague, not really justified idea that the relationship between them would work. And that's fine, but that's not a firm basis for a relationship. And so a lot of fan art and fan fiction written about characters who haven't really spent a lot of time together tends to be rather watery and empty. Thankfully, I do appreciate how it seems like a lot of fans are willing to reconsider 
and readjust their priorities and their likes based on how the show develops. I don't think you should be forced into one team or one faction or one grouping based on any facet of a fandom, but especially based on what romantic pairings you support, that's very silly to me. I think you should be constantly free to change your mind and revise your opinions based on the evidence presented. That's what everyone outside the fandom <laughs> world should be doing a lot more. There's nothing more noble, I think, and more deserving of praise than those who are willing to look at the situation that unfolds itself, realize it's not what they thought it was, and revise their opinions accordingly. That's what a mature adult does. I do think it can lead to some rather silly circumstances, though, such as all of the non-Willow and Hunter relationships suddenly collapsing in popularity as soon as the Willow and Hunter relationship became more popular. To the extent that it would be kind of difficult, I think, after the show is over, looking at it in retrospect, to explain to newer fans, fans who are going to watch the show after it's already completed, why so many people were so enthusiastic about these non-Willow pairings with Hunter. And this kind of sea change occurs without anyone officially announcing it. No one says, oh, hey, you can't support these other pairings anymore. And in fact, while I have a lot of problems with fandoms, I do appreciate that that kind of restrictive gatekeeping attitude does tend to be shut down more often than not. It's just a process that happens organically for more people to stop being so enthusiastic about pairings that have no basis in the show itself and start being so enthusiastic about a pairing that's number one, quite well written and thought out, and number two, very much based in a series of nuanced and thoughtful interactions between two characters. With Lumini having already happened, fans have been thirsting for another potential couple to get excited about. All the will they or won't they, all the almost confessions, all of those little tropes that fans really like about shipping this course that, of course, you can't really apply to a bond like Loose and Amity that has already happened. So when Hunter and Willow came around, it makes sense that people are more than enthusiastic to just jump all over this. It's good to see. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. I really would recommend checking out a lot of the other kinds of videos I've been making on this channel. I've been really trying to spread out the kinds of topics I talk about, and it would be nice to see those other videos getting more support. Anyway, tune in soon for the next analysis. It will be coming soon. Promise you that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.